Dear Mr. Stu, my 13-year-old recently told me she thinks she has social anxiety and may even be on the autism spectrum because she sometimes feels nervous around people and has trouble paying attention in class. I know it's good that she's aware of her feelings, but I'm also worried about this culture where kids are diagnosing themselves or even competing over who has the most mental health struggles. How can I help her take her concerns seriously without getting swept up in this trend? Great question. This is one that I see often, and it used to be really this way with medical doctors, and maybe it still is. I have a friend who is a medical doctor, and um, I had to go see them one time because I had dislocated my shoulder, and on their wall there was a cartoon that said, yes, your WebMD is just as equal to my medical degree. Something like that. that I completely botched that. I'm so sorry. But that's kind of what we're seeing in mental health now too. I cannot tell you how many teenagers have come into my office and have told me the diagnosis that they think that they have because they saw it on TikTok or because they saw it on Love on the Spectrum or whatever it might be that they come in and they're like, I, I have these symptoms. I, I know I, I, this is what I have. This, this is it. This is my diagnosis. And they panic. And sometimes they're very nervous and sometimes they want a certain diagnosis. It could be any number of things. But I see it all the time where kids kind of, they'll watch something and then they believe that they know enough to have diagnosed themselves with a mental health diagnosis. Just so you know, as therapists, I cannot even diagnose myself with a mental health diagnosis. I'm also not allowed to diagnose anyone that I know with a mental health diagnosis of any kind. There are tons of reasons for that, but basically our perspective of ourselves and those we know are skewed. It's different. It is very common in today's world that kids will see something or read something and then believe that that is the thing that they've got going on. So it is important to validate kids' feelings and validate their thoughts about themselves, but not get swept up in that trend of, oh yes, it must be that you have social anxiety and that you're on the autism spectrum because here's, yes, you're right. Here's what's going on. You have to have gone to school and have a degree to be able to diagnose those things. And the reason for that is because there's a lot of nuance to diagnoses. There's a lot of different things that look like different diagnoses. And just because someone sees certain symptoms does not mean they meet the criteria for a full diagnosis. And just because someone is experiencing symptoms of things doesn't mean they have a disorder. If you have looked at or read my book, this is my book, it's called Putting the Pieces Together, Understanding and Supporting Children with Autism Spectrum Disorder. In this book, I talk about how really everyone is on the autism spectrum. It's just where are, is where you're at on the autism spectrum, does that cause a disorder? Are you at a level on the spectrum that causes disorder for you? The same can be true of anxiety. Everyone experiences anxiety, but is the consistency that you're experiencing anxiety and the level that you're experiencing anxiety, is that causing a disorder for you? Or with attention difficulties or focus problems, people talk about ADHD, but it could just be that whatever they're trying to look at is boring or whatever they're being asked to pay attention to is of no interest to them at all. That's not ADHD, that's just boredom. So there's a lot of nuance in diagnoses, but you can absolutely validate your daughter's emotions. If she says, I think that I have social anxiety, you can say, what are the things that make you feel like that? And she might say, well, every time that I'm out with my friends, I just get really nervous thinking about how, uh, how they are feeling and and I just don't know what people are thinking about me and it just makes me very uncomfortable. Wow, I didn't know that about you. Tell me some of the things that you think people are thinking of you. Then you're having this beautiful conversation with your daughter about her thoughts and about her emotions and about how she's feeling. Letting her share those things with, that, with you without getting swept up into this, oh, this is my diagnosis and this is what I know it is. Now, if you hear anything that is very concerning 
as your daughter discusses things with you. Or if this becomes a consistent pattern of maybe over time she feels less and less like she can go out with her friends because she has these thoughts and feelings about being out with them, well then it might be time to go see a professional and see if there is a diagnosis. Do you see that difference there? This beautiful conversation you have with your child might be all the support that she needs. The other side of it is that you then, because you are having this beautiful, amazing, open conversation with your child, you can listen for any red flags that tell you she needs some extra professional support. Then you can go and get her that help. So it is all about validating those feelings without being swept up into, oh yes, this is your diagnosis. Yes, this is what it is. It doesn't have to go that far. It can just be like, it does sound like you have some social anxiety. That's different than you have social anxiety disorder. So hopefully that helps a little bit. I wanna say one more quick thing about children diagnosing themselves. And you mentioned that kids are sometimes excited to have this discussion with each other about who has the most mental health difficulties, that they're trying to outdo each other in that. That is a huge problem. And I'll just say it, it is a huge problem for our kids today. It is so great that we have this open dialogue about mental health. I am so excited that I get to come on here and discuss this with you all. But when kids are trying to outdo each other with how much difficulty they're going through, most of the time what they're really saying is, here's the reason why I should be excused for the disruptive things I do. Or here's the reason why I should be excused from these expectations of me. And we do need to allow children to voice their concerns and share their thoughts and share their feelings. And if they have a diagnosis, we need to support them in all the ways that, they, that we can. But we do need to remind them that a diagnosis can explain disruptive behaviors or explain why certain expectations may be difficult for them, but it does not excuse disruptive behaviors and it does not necessarily excuse them from meeting certain expectations. Keep that in mind because that is really where our world has gone today of, oh, I have anxiety, so that means I just don't have to do any work. No. You have anxiety, so you're going to need some support, and sometimes you're going to feel uncomfortable because of your anxiety, but that doesn't mean that you're not going to have to get the work done. It doesn't mean that you're not going to have to present in front of class. You're still going to have to present in front of class, and that might be very uncomfortable for you, but we're going to be here for you. We're going to cheer you on. Maybe I let some people go up there and sit with you, whatever it might be, but you're still going to have to meet the expectation. Don't let diagnoses or mental health difficulties excuse children from things that are developmentally appropriate expectations of them because then they will start to fight about who has the most disorder because they see that having the most disorder gets you out of the most things explain not excuse validate your child's thoughts and feelings hopefully that was helpful if it was make sure to like this video and subscribe on whatever channel you're watching so that more people can find this and so that i know that this content is helpful 